Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Imperium the Contention. In the game Imperium the Contention, you play as one of many different races, and you're attempting to vie control for the galaxy. Now, of course, everybody else is doing the same thing. You'll be having favor, which you want to keep as high as you can, because if you go to zero, you lose. And you're also going to want to destroy your opponent's bases. If you can do that, you can win as well. There's many different game modes to the game, and different setups for the different number of players, and it normally plays two to four, takes about 45 minutes to an hour and a half to play for ages 13 and up, but you can also play five and six with an additional copy of the game, making the map a little bit bigger and you have enough players to do so with the different number of characters allowed in the game. Additionally, in the game, you're gonna be placing down ships and moving them around, exploring the different galaxies. It has all of the four X's, exploit, exterminate, expand, and uh, ex something or else. And in general, you're gonna basically be moving around, trying to claim as much as you possibly can. There's also a capital mode uh, which you're going to have this Imperial Capital and a number of players, and the, holding this thing is very, very key in that mode. And then, then there's, of course, the two-player mode, which is back and forth combat in the game. Nevertheless, let me go ahead and show you what the game includes and everything you're going to get in the game Imperium The Contention. So here we have the game Imperium The Contention, and we have it set up for two players, but uh, it's going to have a bigger board for three and four players. As you can see, it's got all this stuff included. First, it's got the... Uh, different boxes for all the different sets, which are going to be for each of the different characters, such as the, uh, I picked the weirdest one to say, but Dragulian and the Sec and the Ronian, the Mechon and the Terran. I have the Mechon and the Terran playing here. These are control location tokens that you can utilize in a two-player game, but mainly a three- and a four-player game. The Scepter, which is going to be what you're going to have when you have pri priority, which passes along every round. And, of course, currency, which you're going to start with two, but you're going to gain more as the game goes on. This here is going to be your, I believe, favor is what it's called, but if it goes to zero, you're basically going to be in trouble. That means you're dead, in which case you'll lose. The other way to lose the game is by losing your home world. They have the Mechan home world here and the Terran Alliance home world here. There's random allocation of these different locations here, and as you can see, there's the uh, Imperial Capital for a larger player game, which you put in the middle, and then you have the rest of the home world, so the rest of the players. You also have all of these additional uh, types of worlds and whatnot that can be placed on the board here. It's random, so these were randomly allocated, and these were the leftovers, so there's a bunch of replayability there. And then you're going to have black holes. If ever a location gets exploded by a specific type of ship, this becomes a black hole and it can't be sailed in. It's basically a dead area in space. Additionally, there is tokens such as the dronelings and the destroyers and dreadnoughts that you'll be utilizing. And uh, you're going to have different tokens, whether they be for wormholes or whether they be for other things as well and die of course which you'll be utilizing for your favor uh, these are the additional uh, tokens for settlement that for other other players can use as well to begin the game everybody's going to start off with a deck shuffle it up put eight on your die get a bluff card and set it aside draw four cards from your shuffle deck and then add your bluff card to your hand of four cards making it a hand of five cards placing your home worlds down this is where you're going to start the game off with and then beginning with production and production is pretty simple you're going to take two of these tokens but in general it's going to be all the locations you own plus one then anything else that says maybe produces x or whatever you're going to gain additional resources that way beginning of turn abilities and then you're going to go ahead and draw a card adding it to your hand from there you're then going to move on to movement and you're going to move your ships they're going to be on your uh, locations that have a ship friendly keyword or of course your base and you can move them based on what they say and in this case we don't have one yet after movement is done it's going to go by priority then we're going to go to the develop action which is you can develop an adjacent settlement by simply uh, flipping it over based on a place that you already currently own so in this case i can develop i can settle any of these guys here or I can use my develop action for anything that has a develop keyword. For instance, I can give a friendly ship plus one plus one this turn as opposed to using it to settle a location. I'm going to go ahead and settle this location with the Terran, and the Mecha will go ahead and settle this location, which is an ocean. So now they each have two locations, which means they're going to get more currency on their next turn. After they've gone ahead and developed, they're going to go ahead and move on to the face-off, in which everybody's going to take their hand of cards, and every card has a plus uh, a currency, so three, five, one, three, and then of course your bluff card, and you're going to select one and put it face down. Everybody else will do the same as well, and if they don't want to, they can always select their bluff, and then everybody's going to go ahead and flip these guys, 
and pay for the cost and play it. If it was a bluff card, they do nothing. In this case, it's going to cost me one, and I can go ahead and place this ship on a location that I own that allows me to. And this one here is a sentry, and I can place this one here as well. Ships are going to have a damage, a defense, and they're going to have a movement speed. They also might have specific keywords on them, and of course, where what faction it's from. And after that, you're going to go ahead and uh, go once again. And in this case, I'd probably go ahead and play my bluff card secretly, and uh, they are also going to play their bluff card because this costs them two. And whenever you have zero resources, you're also going to have to just leave your bluff out because everything at least costs one. When you flip over and everybody has a bluff out, that is going to end the face-off round. So whenever at least only one person plays a bluff but everybody else keeps playing, you can keep going. Even if you played a bluff previously, as long as the round is continuing and not everybody played a bluff, you can keep going on the face-off mode. This is basically going to be placing all of your assets, all your locations, all these other kind of things like agents. Most of the things that aren't ships are going to be placed on friendly locations, except for tech, which are placed off of your board. And then you move on to the battle phase. And battles are going to begin by players selecting targets based on their uh, locations of their ships and whatnot, doing damage to either locations, assets, so on and so forth. And the battle works similar to Magic the Gathering, which you're going to do your one damage to your opponent's defense and their attack to your defense. So in this case, if for some reason this was here and this was here, um, this would go to here and this would go to here, in which case my poor little Alliance Bomber would blow up. And this one is a sentry. It says it can be played at any of your locations, not just ones with shipyards or your main location. So that is a special ability. This one says Bombard, which means it gets plus two when it attacks specifically locations. And so that's how they work. They all have different ship. They have different things going on with them. Uh, and after the battle is done, if there's anything that's been destroyed or what, what not, then you're going to go ahead and change the board state. Anything that was damaged but not killed will remain on the board. And then the game will continue. You'll go back to the production phase in which everybody's going to get more resources because they have more locations. And you're then going to go on to the movement phase. And now because they have movement... Oh, and also this thing moves at the end of the turn. This is going to go ahead and move one and two. You can also go ahead and now look at anything with a ship on it secretly. If you uh, have that ship and you own it, it's basically di uh, discovering new locations. This one will go maybe right here. And he'll discover this and look at this one. Then the developing action, once again, you're going to settle adjacently if you'd like. Just like that. And, or of course, using develop actions. This one over here says you gain additional currency, which is pretty useful as well. Then the face-off mode, once again, you'll be, as well as drawing, you know, your card. So everybody's got a card at the very beginning there. And uh, looking at your cards and playing them and so on and so forth. And battling once again. Pretty simple as to how it goes. There's certain ways you're going to be losing this these points here and gaining them as well. If they go to zero, that's it. And if your home world is destroyed as well, that's going to end the game as well for you. Seven points here and eight for this one. They all have different decks and they all have different ships that do different things. Some ships are going to have range, which means they can attack farther. Some of them are going to be very, very strong, like that heavy battle cruiser. You're going to have things like this uh, action, which is a card that instantly gets discarded and you do its ability. Deal three damage to a ship or a station. Uh, this one here is another big ship, but it's got Rampage. You've got actions that will give friendly ships more power, so on and so forth. But of course, all of them are different. There's some of the decks that are going to do things like Dronelings. These guys are actually going to be uh, things that get added. They're little tokens that get added based on cards that are played. And the same can be said for most of these things. There's some wormholes that will let you travel from one point to another. And then there's tokens that you'll add to your ship that will give you bonuses in some way, usually from added action cards. And that is the basic idea of Imperium. You're going to be moving around Around, exploring locations, attacking people's ships, as well as stations and agents and all other kinds of things, utilizing your developing actions and doing your battling and face-off, which is, of course, a big portion of the game, the whole bluffing aspect to it. Anyway, that's the basic idea of the game Imperium, the contention. Let's come up and uh, talk about it, and I'll give you my review. So what do I say about Imperium the Contention? Well, first of all, this is a 4X game, but it is the lightest one I have played that is 4X. This game is basically going to be uh, making your, your board rather quickly. In fact, even the setup is rather quick as far as this game goes. And uh, remembering the rules was uh, really nice. I actually went through it and I'm like, oh, I remember pretty much how to play everything about this game, even though I haven't played it for a couple of weeks. So it's saying a lot for me specifically. But uh, with this game, there's a lot that came to mind. And the first thing is the fact that you're going to be adding this bit, this blind... Uh, bidding, not bidding necessarily, but, but blind, blind purchase.
purchasing phase, in which is the face-off. You'll be putting cards face down, flipping them up. You could be bluffing, and you could also choose to bluff in hopes that a player plays a card so that you can play a card after him or her, and that really, really is fun about this game. You'll be able to explore. You can exploit people's resources. You can expand, and of course, you can exterminate your opponents, which is the main way to win, but there's also variants of play. In fact, one of the ones we were playing is controlling specific locations. There's things he's coming out with already that are going to be new to the game that I liked. Adding the Imperial Capital is really cool as well. I didn't really talk about that too much, but there is a thing called an Imperial Capital, if I can find it somewhere. Um, uh, I don't know where it is. Oh, here it is. And this one here, when you settle it, it flips over and everybody starts losing favor on their turn as long as you control this. And basically, when you go to zero favor, you lose. So this becomes a countdown timer in which most people have to go against that player. So it could be a last ditch move. It could be something if you have a really strong amount of forces to protect it. You can try and basically control that area. Playing this game with two players is fun. I enjoy it. It's a back and forth battle, though. And generally speaking, with these type of games, I like adding that third or even a fourth player is, is definitely what I prefer. Four players is probably the sweet spot for this game, but it does well at two and three as well. If you like 4X games, but you want something a little lighter, something a little quicker, and something that is uh, easy for people to get into, this is definitely one I suggest taking a look at. It has a lot of really cool components, a lot of cool moving parts. Everything flows and makes sense as it works. I think the rulebook's going to need some some little touch-ups and whatnot. I'd like to see some stuff like a player reference card and whatnot, but that's all stuff that's likely going to be included. It's just not here yet because I'm dealing with a prototype, so I'm not going to judge it on that kind of stuff. If you get like a game that's, if you're more of like a lighthearted gamer and something with a little less strategy, then it's probably not going to be for you if you want something that's low strategy. This one has a lot of strategy. It's just compact into a smaller streamlined game. It's not going to be as crazy as something like Civ 5, but at the same time, it's not something like Takanoko either, right? So it, it has that depth of play, but just an, it's also has a nice ease to it. And it's a great gateway to jump in. If it came down to playing in, with a new player that hasn't played a lot of board games before and you want to show them a 4X and you want to show Show them either Twilight Imperium or this one. This one is definitely one I would suggest playing with first. And if they like this, this is something that they can get into those deeper, thicker, stronger, harder ones, I should say. Um, but nevertheless, I really enjoyed my time with this game. This is a lot of fun. Those 4X players out there that like games that are probably you know similar to those other games I've been talking about, you're going to enjoy this game. I would also think it would be probably a better price point than most games based on the type of components in here. Everything is high quality and has really nice artwork. Uh, there's one that I haven't even to show you all of the artwork yet because there's a new it's still being developed right now but they have at least five to show you here and the fact that you can play with five and six players is a nice touch too by adding an extra game to it if you want to right because some people don't need the five and six player and it's better to just have the the smaller game especially with a 4x game right uh, I really, really enjoy this game. I think you guys have got enough information to decide for yourselves if it's something you want to pick up. You can look at Imperium the Contention down below in the description if it's something that seems right for you. Let me know in the description whether or not you think this is a cool type of a game or not. For me personally, love the Forex style games. And I love the fact that you are putting the cards down and flipping them up. That is a nice little touch to a game that I don't see quite often. And specifically for a Forex game, it's very, very different. Uh, Everything else though, is very similar for you guys that have already played games like this. You're going to get a good kick out of it, I think. Anyway, let me know. Description as well as outro. All right, guys. Thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, go and check out the rest of our videos. Here on YouTube, like, subscribe, and comment. It all does help. We do greatly, greatly appreciate it. Please click that button. Please. As well as take a look at Imperium, the contention. For those of you who like 4X games and want to get other people into it, this is a good choice for you. Don't forget to as well check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We got tons of stuff going on right now. We're giving away two games: Dogs and, of course, Bloodborne by Simon. Both games are available for you on our website. Don't forget to check out our friends, everythingboardgames.com and The Giveaway Geek. They got tons of great giveaways as well, and we're partnering up with them for both uh, the Bloodborne as well as the... Ooh, we got another one too. D&D Starter Kit. You can check out that as well. Alright guys, thank you so much, and as always, I look forward to seeing you guys next time in the Imperium of the Contention!